Okay, so actually, let me bring up the comments. Um, I started to make a video last night um, where, in reaction to two comments in my latest video, uh, it's so hard for me to slow down and give context, but okay, in my latest video um, called um, uh, Con Temporary and Steady State. Um, look, now it doesn't want to work. Um, surely there's, yeah, Frank says it. It'll go to the comments page probably, but I'm, you ever click on the video and you just get a bunch of numbers? <laughs> I'm sure you do, it happens to me regularly. Okay, two comments by Heavy Traffic Ahead and Mystery Accent. Okay, so Heavy Traffic Ahead said, how dare you, quote, he's gonna be quoting me, this is a comedy paraphrase of my video somehow. How dare you not comply and comport yourself with the neocon Iago Snidely whiplash that the Chomsky tards so desperately need to make their earnest points. Shame, sir. Shame, I say. Well, we will have none of that. I'll make you out to be the cardboard villain our simplistic worldview requires, no matter if you like it or not. That's the shorter Piro. And the irony, of course, is you're calling me a Chomsky tard. You're the one using these simple roles and stereotypes. You're saying I'm doing it in the video. Okay, I accept your point. What are you talking about? Where do I tell people how to comport themselves? You're not fitting my stereotype. Where do I do that? That's a thing that can be done. Where in my video? So I was going through my video to see. And the computer chunked up and it's like, okay, fuck it. And then the other one uh, is this mystery accent. He says, there's an interesting book you should read. It's called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Again, this video in the morning, I'm wandering through ideas, things that have been of interest in me, making a couple that I might have made a videos about, but not doing that. I'm brain dumping it out. A couple comments. Where did I call out a, a warning? My answer to mystery accent in comments. I don't even know what you think this video was trying to warn you about. Then I go on about how telling him, uh, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm trying to tell you how it looks to me. I'm not calling a warning to you. I'm asking you how it looks to you. I like to map conceptual territory. I have my preferences just as I have my favorite animals. But all the methods of life are of interest in principle. All the animals' methods of life are of interest in principle. It's just to me, due to my own preferences, some appeal more and are personally more interesting. That is, both certain parts of the conceptual territory appeal to me and are my favorites in the same way that I have my favorite animals, right? Nothing against animals that aren't my favorite. I'm glad that they're other people's favorites so that there could be scientists studying all of the animals. So where was I, where is the warning in the video he's replying to? So I was gonna go through it all, but I'm not gonna do that now. Instead, I mean, let me just, and, and also somebody told me that uh, in the comments that Unseen Perfidy answered this, but evidently the video's taken down. I don't even know if that's the case. It's Unseen, you're a up, putting down, taken kind of, and how could he reply to this? He says he's not paying attention to me anymore. I already decided that, yeah, it's unfortunate. I would have liked to talk to Unseen Perfidy, but the fact is we do disagree on various things, okay? And uh, I also, I like, an, uh, I like an argument. I don't look for arguments where there are none. I don't make an argument where I disagree with people. On the other hand, if you talk to somebody long enough, you'll find out your agreement is here and there are disagreements on the edges and in other areas. And eventually you get to those. Now, I think it's funny if unseen or skeptical heretic don't like to argue or if they're gonna claim they don't like to argue, and yet it could be true, some people just like going skeet shooting and target practicing. They don't want a challenging contest. I love a challenging contest, and I don't see how I can lose it. If I go down and have to say, oh, you're right, like Casino McCool just showed up the other day. He convinced me that pi is just as much a definite exact number as the number two. I'd always thought, no, it needs infinite digits, and that's a flaw in the way di di the number digit system works, not in the reality of pi. If anything, pi has a better definition than the number two, I would say now. 
that was a huge success. I went, oh, you're right, the point I'm making. No, I'm going to have to change that. Yeah, pretty much of a big difference. And I had to hop over to this thing, go backtrack and go down another branch. That is that is what I'm looking for. But um, I'm not going to fake my way into that feeling. I mean, I will, I also like having an argument. So, yeah, if people want to pretend to be sensitive, I don't get it. If you come out to somebody, it seems a little hypocritical. You come out to somebody with insults right off the bat, and but you're going to be like, no, we're all about courtesy, kindness, and respect for others in every you know higher standard. How I think I am sufficiently respectful of people's ideas, especially you know. And uh, Frank's has said I saw some videos. Frank says well, I'm pissing them off, and they're terrible people, and I'm here to malign them. I'm here to make an ass of myself because they're assholes and they were an asshole to me and here's the reasons and to me that's like well that's not it I don't I would not do that decision and if pe the people he's doing that toward now think he's an asshole to such a degree that they don't want to talk to him fine but at the point where he makes those people demand renunciations from others go educate yourself you walk up on two people arguing and it's like before the guy will talk to you it's like renounce him I'm like I what does, don't you see he's cussing I'm like I don't, what's going, I don't know what's going on I don't care about that let's have our own thing on the ideas not on the personality triangles but some people do believe that some people are like that guy that former friend wronged me now I want all of our common friends to declare they're not his friend either I just believe that's wrong in principle it's kind of a value system I think people should be able to judge me and the only issue where you should demand a renunciation is like if somebody's on the federal bench and does something uh, morally um, uh, repugnant, you know, moral impulchritude. Uh, somebody else also on that bench should probably make a statement. You know, if if the if somebody in the cabinet or, or the federal government does something horrendous, you might want the head of a department or the president to make a comment because they have this formal relationship. Just random strangers on the internet. No, that's petty and kind of weak. Um, I myself find I uh, don't have as much earnest argument as I'd like online because I'm not going to make an argument with someone I agree with or over something I don't really believe or pretend to believe something more strongly. So I'm looking for people that I disagree strongly with that also aren't crazy. So like arguing race realism or young earth creationism, it's like that's not an earnest argument to me because the argument never even gets anywhere close to anything I'm really thinking about. You know something I'm really figuring out about so it's not as honest of an argument to me to just go you know argue against race realism you know to a certain degree uh, market minarchy yeah because those questions of how we run the economy a little bit more this direction or that direction they're on the table okay socially I don't really consider young earth creationism or uh, racist realism to you know, it's not actually on the table. It's just nutcasey stuff. You know, you could be forced to admit it's on the table if, if you know, if you get to a point where uh, you like to have Nazis take over and that sort of thing suddenly hit. But you have to take it seriously. They got guns and are running things. So in things like when unseen perfidy says as an aside how successful our counterinsurgency tactics were in the Philippines. To me, I'm like, ah, oh, we could have a really good argument about that. And nobody out there in the world seems able to have an argument with me on things like that. There's always going to be some excuse, right? Some excuse and just weak excuses. Because if you're going to say, well, you don't comport yourself, you know, well enough, you make a joke talking about how you pwned me after I called you uninformed. P said pwnage being you admit that I'm not uninformed. See, to me that's all like very mild and that's part of the game. And, I, and at most, you know, I just try to have a sense of humor about it. You know, be playful. Playful, I'm playful. Meow. But, um, I understand that other people could have other standards 
but I don't see them engaging in challenging arguments, right? I see easy things taken up, and and I like that as well. I think there's it's it's there's a lot of it's like if you like fine food, then there's thousands of dishes, and it probably means you're interested in trying a new one right to the end of your days. You know, um, that's the kind of appreciation. It's not an appreciation for ideas that glorify God. No, it's ideas about God and will and about politics. In case politics that used to be um, focus on political philosophy online because we need to do something. We got a big problem, everybody seems to agree, we need to figure out something as a group, how we're gonna stop this gridlock that's about to choke us anytime. Various kinds of gridlock in getting solutions. The checks and balances are too balanced, like something really heavy and it's balanced, but it's like it, it seems like it could teeter over. And if it's not going to teeter over, then people are just panicking for no reason. Then we need to address that. How can we help people not to panic? Whatever. This problem needs a solution. What the problem is, what the solution is, those are open to debate. And they're important for citizens in the same country and across uh, international borders, national borders. We need to have this discussion, I think. Now, somebody was implying earlier on about unseen perfidy and his demand that the thing is that unseen perfidy evidently according to this person is a well-respected YouTuber on these kind of subjects and if somebody wants to talk to him because of his privileged position of being in that you know he can make extra demands because of the value of his time you know and to me that's like well that's not why I was talking to him I was talking to him because this argument, because he joined in in an argument where Skep had just started ridiculing uh, people that support Snowden as if they're chemtrailers, you know. So, and then he jumped on me when I made comments, reasonable comments in his video. He jumped on me like, what are you drunk about? And he didn't block me and all this bullshit. Then he unblocked me and whatnot. That's how this all came about. Because here's the thing, I don't, well respected internet commentator, look, do you guys know that out there in the regular world, people that do what we do and talk our mind on the internet, the reputation is we're a bunch of blowhards and we're crazy. And if you look around, you can see why that's not necessarily an undeserved reputation. So I see myself as rising above that. I do it for itself. There is abs it's the, there is the opposite of some sort of positive reputation going on, right? I do it for the ex actual activity of exploring ideas with other minds as points and counterpoints. Because the idea that I want to talk about politics to unseen perfidy, because that'll give me legitimacy as a political